I love the look of wood. All right, I love the look of wood so much that I decided to bring in butcher blocks and install them as a countertop on these counters. I love the way that the grain moves on this, especially on maple. The color, the cleanliness, it just looks so clean and so well lit that we decided to bring it in for another install. Um, I used this material originally in my Wildwood store build out and I, I couldn't be happier with it. This is about an inch and a half of butcher block. It's maple, so it's incredibly hard. Very, very difficult to, to, to cut into which means that it's gonna be a very durable material to work, to work on in a retail environment. Um, there's a caveat to bringing this material in. To bring in this material in, we could only bring it in in 25 inch wide pieces by 12 foot long. So what my man did over here was, he used some of his uh, ingenuity. He actually created these vices out of two by fours and screws. So we're joining these pieces and the reason why he did this was that we joined these pieces in order to create a 32 inch wide piece. So like I said, these pieces only come in this kind of width right here. From this line to this line is what you can see in the original width. So what we're doing is we're, we're in order to, to make a bigger block, we're taking a separate piece, we're gluing it, and then we're vice gripping it on and joining them together. And he was uh, creative enough to, to make these pieces out of two by fours and screws. Doing this, like many other things that we do here, is one of those things where it takes a lot of craftsmanship and ingenuity, but the outcome is amazing. So this is what the pieces look like separate. Once we cut them, right, you'll see that there's a groove in between them. This is a 25 inch original piece that was cut to about six feet. This is an additional piece that we're adding on, right? So what we do is we glue these ends and then we vice grip them on with these I don't even know what you're calling these because these are not traditional vice grips. I'm calling them Oleg grips, okay? Oleg grips, all right? So what he does is we, we glue the inside of them. Yeah, we glue the inside of them, right? In between, and then he starts applying pressure. The amount of pressure that he's putting on, these, on this block is absolutely ridiculous. Um, you can't really see it well from there, but because of the amount of pressure that he put on these blocks, some of these screws actually bent in the process of squeezing these boards together. And the reason why you have to do that is you're not going to be able to get a tight grip in between these boards. I mean, you can't even see where the, group, where the, where the seam line is because of that pressure and glue. So if you're not pressurizing them correctly, like this space right here, if you're not pressurizing them correctly, you're gonna see that line in between. And then everything you did was worthless. See that line in between that? That's the, that's the whole point of, of using these vice grips. You glue them and then you bring the boards together with an extreme amount of pressure to do that. And like I said, that's why we got a little bit more professionalism here to be able to do that. In the process of designing a store, you gotta think about a few different things. One of the most important things you gotta think about is the way that colors are gonna sit on top of each other. We're, we're staining this gray, but the type of gray that we chose is like a vintage kind of gray, and it's lightly stained. So you'll see all these yellow undertones that come off this wall, and then we tie them in with this maple, which has a lot of yellow in it as well. And we tie all of this together with that Brazilian flooring, the, flooring, the yellow tones in that Brazilian pecan flooring. So building this store takes a lot, of pro a lot of thought and a lot of ingenuity, but <clears throat> like I say in a lot of other videos that we have, I think planning your, your, color, your color tones and what things are gonna look like together, that's, that you start with that. If you don't have that right, you can't go any further. So I think with this store, we've been able to create something really special. Um, I think I was really happy with the way this looked in a Wildwood store. So we decided to reincorporate this block and these counters in here as well. I'm really excited about the way this looks. I think people are gonna really like it. So what he's doing right now is he's sitting these on boards and he's setting up his vices. His Oleg vices. That's what we're calling these. Oleg vices. The amount, <laughs> Oleg's grandfather's vices. The amount of pressure that it takes to join this seam. Snap this, right? This was a, a piece of a two by four and it pressed that washer so far into this piece of wood. You can get an idea how much pressure it takes to really do this. All right, 
The, the reason why we're doing all of that, we're pressurizing this so much, is to remove that seam that joins these, these two pieces. You can see it kind of right here, and you can look at it right here, see how tight it is? Once that's sand, sanded down, you're not seeing any of that. Okay, so when we're using this to keep that glue from sinking into the cabinet. Sitting this underneath right here. All right. So whatever glue squeezes out sits on here, and then we can pull it off and just sand it off instead of having it all, all inside the cabinet. Okay. Try to take both hands off. What do you want to cut it? Yeah. Cut what? Cut this board or cut the other board? No, the small one. I don't want to use. I don't want to rip the the big one. It's right. Right. Okay. Okay. So you're just gonna plan this? Yeah. <laughs> 